so Cambio, for you who doesn't know that, um, we are a company that is stated here in Sweden. And today we're going to do a presentation. Uh, my name is Johanna Hultkrans. I'm Chief Innovation Officer. And I leave the word to the room in Stockholm. So Thomas, could you present yourself just first? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so my name is Thomas Mara Morrison. I'm one of uh, uh, two founders of Cambio. I'm a member of the board of Cambio. But in this context, I'm, I'm uh, I participate as a senior advisor. And my name is Martin Grunberg, and I'm a senior product manager at Cambio. My name is Carl Hildebrand, and I'm a key account director at Cambio. And my name is Gustav Hultgren. I'm a senior software engineer at Cambio. Perfect. And uh, to prepare this, we have also some extra team members who cannot attend today, but they are. you're going to hear their voices because we have recorded in prehand uh, some of the demo cases. So uh, we just very briefly now, we just have one minute for this. We're going to present ourselves a little bit more and our solution. And then we're going to walk through the demo with the different personas that you have prepared so beautifully. And then we will have uh, approximately uh, half an hour for question and answers in the end. And as um, Osa said earlier, we have pre-recorded some of the demos, so we cannot uh, pause and, and, and show you in the demo part, but perhaps we can talk more about it in the Q&A. So Cambio, we are uh, working very thoroughly and has been doing from the very, very beginning of the company's uh, time to provide smart, reliable, and user-friendly solutions. And we have a large focus on the ecosystem. The open ecosystem is very important for us. And we really want to help out and improve the healthcare and patient safety. And uh, Cambio's customer footprint look actually like this. And uh, some of you might not know about that, but we also have a lot of presence out of Scandinavia. And uh, for example, we have in New Zealand and Australia, very recently Australia as well, with our clinical decision support solutions that are based on open air. And that we have this global um, footprint helps us both understanding the need of localization, but also that the focus on sustainable information supply is something that everybody all over the world is talking about. And for us, the sustainable information supply, uh, of course, it's based on the principles from um, FAIR data that you might recognize, but we also focus a lot on the vendor neutral data models that we see as a part of these principles as well. And the criteria is a lot for us to talk about standards and try as much as possible to follow the international standards. We are focusing on fire, open air, and SNOMED CT, and we see that they, together with different purposes, are a very strong combination. And the impact for you as a customer is uh, multi, it's, it's, it's a lot of different impacts, I would say. But as you can see, the red thread through this is the sustainable information, uh, I would say. So today we're going to walk through you, uh, the Cambio platform, as we name our solution that we'll focus on today. And it has three parts. The clinical data repository, um, the core services upon that that helps you out with the different aspects using the CDR. But also we have the authoring part with different tools. So I think that you will uh, get a quite thorough picture today uh, of the Cambio platform and what we have today and what we have in pipeline. So with that said, I uh, think that we will bounce into the demo. And uh, we have done like this. We have focused on these six different personas that you sent us beforehand. And we're gonna walk them through uh, in this roadmap and we, start with one of the personas and then we walk through the demo cases and then we take the next persona and the first one is Hannah and uh, we're going to walk through like this and uh, I think it could be good that you Martin start to share screen now yes sure if you turn off your sharing Do 
You can see it now, right? And you can hear me? Yes, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start with the first. So as an informatician, I want to connect an external terminology service to make sure that the terms within the data are consistent with appropriate terminology standards and value sets subsets. We will now demonstrate how you can use uh, Cambio Platform's terminology service API uh, as an informatician or a developer to access terminology data and do different types of terminology operations. So uh, the terminology service that Cambio provides uh, is based on the, uh, the FHIR terminology specification and it supports basically the full uh, terminology service uh, or terminology specification from FHIR. And we will show that by uh, demonstrating a few of the common use cases you might have on a terminology service. So we will start by retrieving a code system by ID. Uh, in this case, we will be fetching the Swedish release of the uh, ICD-10 uh, terminology. And we can see we're fetching a code system resource with the ID uh, that you can see there. And once we do the request, we get an OK back and we return a code system uh, with the ID ICD-10. And here, of course, you can then see the, the full uh, code system resource. I will move on to show how you can uh, look up a certain code and it uses the uh, lookup operation. Uh, and here you can see, what is this code here uh, in the Snowmid CT code system? So if we send that, uh, you will get back that this code was in fact the, uh, the thrombosis code. So this could be useful for, for example, user interface display. Next, we will uh, validate a, a code uh, in a code system. And in this case, we will, uh, the code is the, this MPU code uh, and the code system is MPU. And we will be using the validate code operation from FHIR. And here we can see that it returns a, a Boolean value of true. So it means that this code is part of the MPU code system. Finally, we'll do subsumption testing. And here we will actually be using the subsumes operation in FHIR and check two codes. And uh, this will return which one subsumes uh, the other. And subsumes, of course, is whether one is parent or child, uh, their, their parent and child relationship. So if I do this, uh, we can see that in this case, code A uh, subsumes code B, it's the parent too. Next, we will uh, show how you can work with the value set resource. Um, and to show this, we will be retrieving a certain value set um, using its ID. Here you can see you get the value set back. And this value set it has a Swedish title, Administreringsväg, which means administration route. And you can then see what's included here. Uh, it has a different set of Snowman ZT concepts. Finally, we will move on to show the last uh, main resource in the fire specification. Uh, for the fire terminology specification, the concept map. So we will be uh, retrieving a concept map uh, using its ID. And here we will see that the we will get a concept map back. Here you can see information about the concept map. And last but not least, we can then use the, the concept map uh, and to see whether uh, we can map the code, in this case, a, a Snowman CT code uh, to some other code system using the concept map. And here we can uh, see that this code maps to a, a, a code from another code system. Through the CKM, it is possible to connect external terminologies through 
this bottom terminologies. Here we can see that we have previously connected a series of different terminologies, more specifically ICD-10. If we want to make use of these diagnosis codes inside the ICD-10 terminology, we can simply go to templates and we need to find a template which has this terminology is connected to it. In this case, we have a template called external terminologies. On the right side, we can see that this template contains the diagnosis ICD-10 as a coded text value. If we want to make use of this, we can create a sample form and from here we can simply add the content to the form from the from the template into the form like this. Let's say we want to add something and search for any code and submit it to the CDR. Here we can make a search for either a code or a text. As an example, diabetes type 1, we can search for and we will be presented with the first 10 hits. Instead, if we want to search for a diabetes type 1 code, E10, we can also do that. Let's say we instead want to submit diabetes type 2. We pick the first option, we submit. We see the confirmation below that the information has been saved. So now we can query this, going back to the CKM, opening the AQL builder, and here you will make a query based on the coded text value and run the query. Here we get the code we just submitted, E11. We can also see this as a raw code string value. So we will move on to the next uh, user story. Uh, as a healthcare system developer, I want to integrate software to be able to store and retrieve medical data in an open air EHR system alongside other healthcare system vendors. We will now show uh, the Cambio platform open air API and the, the Cambio CDR's open air API. And that's something you can use as a developer to, uh, to create EHRs and create compositions and query patient data, of course. And we'll, we will demonstrate this by doing some simple use cases. First, we will create an EHR, so new patient record. So we will be posting uh, to the EHR endpoint. And if we click send here, it will return a 201 and we create an EHR. Uh, and here you can see the EHR value. Next, we will move on to create the composition uh, for this EHR that we just created. So and we can do that in different ways. Uh, the Cambria platform supports different formats. We will start with the canonical um, format, then go on to the SIMSDT and then the TDD format. So two different simplified formats of the canonical uh, format. So here we will start with then creating a simple composition and it uses that the composition uh, endpoint and here in the body you can see that we have a uh, a composition including among other things a blood pressure so i'll click on send and it creates a, a 201 created, which means the, uh, the composition has been successfully posted to the EHR. And this just uses the, this is a variable, it just uses the EHR I just created in the previous post. Now we can go to the uh, get endpoint, so get composition, and same thing here, this saves the composition ID that we just created for simplicity and for demo purposes. So I click send here now, 
it returns a 200, so it went fine. And we get the, uh, the composition back. Contains the blood pressure, among other things. So 150 over 50. Now uh, we will basically do the same thing, but using another format. So we will go to, uh, we will create a simple composition again. Check the, the body here, it has a different format. It's the, the SIM SDT format. So simplify, one of the simplified formats. So I'll click send and we'll get a 201 created. And then we can again do a get, use the get endpoint and we will fetch the composition that we just created using the SDT. So I'll get a uh, I click send uh, and I get 200 OK and you can see I get the composition back. Finally, we'll be using the TDD format and doing the same thing. We'll be posting the composition. You can see the body here. So I click send. I also got a 201 created, okay. And then you can see it was uh, returned. And if I do a create, sorry, a, a, a get on the same composition using the ID I just uh, created, I'll click send. You can see I got a 200 okay, and it returned the composition that was just created using TDD format. Finally, we, we will show you how you can query the CDR for patient data. And in this case, uh, we will show two different types of querying, a patient-based and populational-based. And initial use, uh, test case or demo case, we will just simply retrieve a patient's blood pressure. And it will be based on an ad hoc query, uh, not a pre-configured stored query, but both endpoints are supported. So we'll be, we'll be posting uh, this query and you can see the query here inside the body and we'll click send and we'll get a 200 okay. And in the result, uh, you can see that we get uh, a value here of 100 for this patient for diastolic blood pressure. And if we go to the populational query here, if we want to get an average blood pressure, uh, just as an example, we will here also do an, uh, a, we'll be posting an ad hoc query and the body looks like this. You can see the ADL AQL query. Uh, and in this case, we've pointed out three specific uh, explicit EHRs, uh, but this could also be run on any any EHR. So I click send, get back at 200 OK, and then you can see in the result we get an average diastolic of 83. We will now show how we can use the Cambios the Cambio form builder and the forms tool uh, to create uh, forms for uh, data input on top of an open air based template. The main point we want to show here is that you can use Cambio platform and the associated forms tool to post open air compositions into Cambio's CDR, but also into CDRs from other vendors. And this is very important for Cambio to want to embrace the vendor neutral paradigm and show that our products can be combined together with products from other vendors. 
So I'll be logging in now into the CKM and here we can find the uh, our different forms and tools and, and decision support guidelines and so on. I will start here with checking which uh, CDR the, uh, the forms tool is currently connected to. So I'll go to the admin mode and then to the clinical data repository tab. And here we can see it's linked to the Cambio CDR. I'll then go to the forms tab and the forms builder and choose a simple forms tool uh, for demo purposes here. And it's a BMI calculator. I'll go into the edit uh, mode and you can see here there's an edit mode of the form. I'll go to the preview mode and here you can you can try how it works when you uh, enter data. So I will just enter some dummy data here and you can see the BMI calculates automatically. That's configured in the form. And here you can see the output composition. Once you press submit, th this gets posted to the, in this case, the Cambio CDR. And I will now show you how you can uh, also retrieve this data using an AQL query. So I'll go back to the form and click on the create AQL query. Then you will get support to easily create uh, an AQL query. So in this case, I only want simple, uh, simple result, I want the height, I want the weight, and I want the BMI. So then the tool, the form builder constructs this uh, query for you. And in this case, I only want the last one. So if I click on the, the button here, it returns the latest uh, height and weight and BMI uh, from the Cambio CDR. What I will do now is I will redirect the uh, the forms builder and forms tool to the Airbase uh, open source CDR instead. So I'll go back to the uh, the admin view. I will go to the clinical data repository uh, tab and I'll switch this to Airbase and save the configuration. I also need to log out for this change to have effect. So when I log back in, I'll do the same thing. I will go to the, the forms tool, choose the Be My Calculator form. Uh, I will click on the edit form button, go into the preview mode, and I will enter a new value here. Uh, I'll choose a different value this time, but it works in the same way. Uh, the forms tool generates the composition and when I click on submit, it submits the composition into the CDR and this, tape, uh, this time it's Airbase. And we can, in the same way, uh, create an AQL query using the AQL Builder tool to choose height, weight, and BMI in this case. I'll also just take the latest one and I can then execute and you can find the uh, height and weight that just posted into the, the Airbase CDR. So this proves that the, the Cambio Forms tool is works with different CDRs, which is very important. So we will move on to user story number three here. Uh, as a healthcare developer working on Smart on Fire application, I want to be able to access part of the open air information as a standard fire API. Now we'll move on to show a little bit more about uh, of our fire and open air capabilities. Uh, and we will demonstrate primarily the patient service. And uh, currently Cambio platform doesn't provide any uh, or fire interfaces on top of the CDR, but that is something that we'll that is part of our roadmap and we are looking into. But we will show you initially the patient service, which links up the uh, the EHR and the EHR ID with a, a patient demographic service. So we will start with uh, showing a use case where we create a patient and then retrieve them used using a query uh, 
uh, querying for their their business ID, so an externally known identifier for the patient. So we will start with creating a patient, and we can check here the the body. So it's a fire patient resource uh, which we're creating, and here we'll be creating it with a, a Swedish person number, which is is our national identifier, and uh, for the demo purposes, it's including a variable here that's set within the Postman API tool. So it's a predefined person number. So when I send this, what I get back, first of all, it gets a 201 created. What I get back is, is the fire source that was created uh, with its ID. And you can see actually two things happen. One is it created the, uh, the person number, set a person number, a, a dummy one but one that conforms to the Swedish person number format. It also returns a, uh, an EHR ID. So this patient is now linked to its EHR. And you can see here the, the system also defines which CDR instance has uh, created the, the EHR ID. So it can be mapped correctly back to the, uh, the specific CDR. We can then search uh, by business ID and uh, it's also so it's a fire query using the uh, identifier element, so it's a it's a query to our patient service. So when I uh, execute this, you can see I'm I'm querying based on the the business ID that we just used. So and of course when you do a fire query, you'll get a bundle back, uh, and it returned one um, patient, which you can see here. What we can also mention is that uh, I, yeah, here you see the, the person number and the EHR ID for this patient we just created. And we can also mention that, that uh, the patient service complies with the, the Swedish industry standard fire profile called the, the patient SE vendor light. So Cambi believes a lot in, in collaborating around uh, fire profiling to create vendor neutral and industry standard fire APIs so that when you as a developer or as the IT department at a, a, a healthcare provider, you can develop applications that work towards different platforms and different fire APIs. So vendor neutrality and standardization and collaboration within the e-health community is super important for Cambio. Uh, I will now move on to show a few bit more uh, use cases similar to this. We will uh, create a patient and retrieve a patient using the EHR ID. So first we will just do a similar, we'll create a new patient. And here you see the patient body and the EHR ID will be automatically created when I do the post to the patient service. So again, I get a 201 created. And you will see that, uh, well, this was the, the person number. Here's the EHR ID. So now we will use that in the query. So we'll do a fire query on the patient resource using the, uh, these uh, values. Again, these are variables in the Postman test tools. They will pick up the ones right from the patient resource we just created. So when I execute this, it will return a 200 OK. And uh, it, again, it's a bundle returning one, one patient, uh, which you can see here. And has the patient with the that person number and that EHR ID. We will now also demonstrate a few other fire capabilities that come with the Cambria platform that can be useful when doing open air based development or any type of development in an open platform or low code, no code, uh, using a low code, no code toolbox. And uh, something that you will always need when you create applications or most often they need when you create applications is an organization service or an organization catalog. Um, and we will show you quickly how you can use the Canvas platform to, to query different types of organizations. And this is just a simple demo. We will we have the organization resource and the Canvas organization service. Here we can uh, retrieve an organization using the, its ID. And here we get a 200 back. Uh, 
and here we will, we will also use the Swedish National Industry uh, Common uh, Profile for Organizations. It's called Organization SE Vendor Light. Uh, and here you'll get back uh, an organization resource containing, among other things, the Swedish uh, HSA care provider and care unit data. Uh, and here we get other the identifiers of the of the organization and more. So you get a complete uh, organization resource, and you can also query for uh, organizations, for example, using the uh, a business identifier. In this case, it's the uh, HSA ID. So if we do a query, we get an OK and return a, a bundle as usual. And it's one uh, organization resource that we get back. And here you see the, the actual um, organization. It's care providers and care units and it's other data. You see the name, it's the medicine clinic. Finally, we will demo uh, the Cambridge Platform Consent Service, which is a service for managing patient consents. Uh, and of course, consents are super important for supporting different types of regulatory requirements and patient integrity requirements. Um, and we will show <clears throat> a few use cases and example requests to it. First, we will create what's called an inner block, which is a uh, a specific type of block or, or, or a consent that's used in a Swedish context. It's called an inrespar in Swedish. We'll not go through the full body of the uh, request here, but we can show how you can send one. And you get the, uh, it creates a 201 created. So we created a new uh, block here, a new inner block. For patient Tolvan Tolvanson, a famous Swedish test patient. We can go, move on to create an outer block, which is a similar type of block or consent, uh, just as a different organizational scope. So we can check the body. Uh, we can see here the, the resource that we'll be, we will be creating. It's again on the same patient. Of course, there's lots of block data and consent data here. Can post that. Again, we receive a 201 created, successful creation of the uh, outer block, so a consent resource, and the, the data associated with it for this patient. And then we can also create a, a consent to shared record keeping, with this, which is another type of consent within the Swedish PDL or patient data law uh, regulatory space. Uh, and we have the body here. Uh, it's coded using SNOMED as an example. So we, we post that consent, uh, we get a 201 back, and that consent has been created for the patient. Same patient. Then we have a set of query um, parameters, or sorry, query uh, endpoints for the consent service. And here, as an example, we will be querying for consents for a certain patient or the patient we just used uh, and uh, consents coded with this code. And we can actually check here, what, what does this code uh, mean? Uh, if we go to the SNOMED CT browser, as an example, we can check the yeah. Swedish edition And if we post that there, we see it's a some ticket uh, till some journalföring or consent to uh, coherent or shared record uh, keeping. And that's a, a type of consent used in Sweden. So if we execute that, we get a 200 OK, uh, and a, we get a bundle back, of course. Uh, it actually includes four different consents. Uh, and they're all listed here uh, as usual. And there are different ways you can query uh, the consent service. We will not go through uh, them all here today, but uh, the consent service uh, 
is also planned to be extended with things like uh, consents to research studies and, and uh, other types of, of uh, biobank and you, uh, there are other use cases that we will be uh, supporting in the in the consent service in the roadmap. That was user story number three. We'll move on to number four. Uh, as an administrator or developer, I want to configure or be able to create solutions for collecting uh, Internet of Things device measurements from patients. Uh, this includes data from medical devices, data from patients' privately purchased devices, and uh, uh, some metadata around the, uh, the data that was created. And uh, in general, the Canby platform and the CDR supports the full open air reference model. So as, as long as those requirements fit the, the open air specifications, uh, it's supported. And we showed parts of the, the open air uh, API there. Uh, but we also, uh, when looking at these user stories, we saw that we, th these type of requirements can be solved in different ways. So it's super important for can be all together with, with the uh, open air community to standardize uh, the patterns for these type of use cases. Uh, so we get a consistent uh, sort of usage of open air for these use cases, like we've done with the implementation guides uh, for PDL and others. So we will not be showing anything specific regarding this. Uh, next, so use store number five, as an administrator or developer, I want to configure or be able to create solutions for collecting data from patient reported forms, photos, and videos. Uh, in this case, we'll demo the forms. Uh, photos and videos are not currently supported, but are part of our strategy and roadmap going forward. And now we will showcase how a patient-facing form can be created using the Cambio form builder. Let's say we want to create a form where patients can submit their daily blood pressure measurements. We start off by going to templates and we select the template we want to base our form on. In this case, it's called regular archetypes. We see in the template tree to the right that the blood pressure archetype is available. So we start off by going to create form. On the left, we can see the blood pressure archetype is available. So we simply instantiate the form fields we want by clicking. Now let's say we want to have a welcoming text. We do that by going to widgets. We can instantiate a widget such as a text field. A success message can be added by instantiating the indicator widget. Now inside this indicator, we will have a message. The type of indicator can be changed in the properties to the right. There can be rearrangements of the form by dragging and dropping. There can also be further rearrangements using, as an example, card widget, which will then separate certain form fields from each other. Now let's say we want to do a change of these text fields. We do that by going to locales to the left. We scroll down and find the text field we want to edit. This will be the welcoming text. And we can also add a success message. This text can be edited. As an example, we can do the heading in bold and the success message in italics. There can be further edits of other form fields. As an example, we might want to add some 
additional information to the comment. We find the comment in this list and we add some more information. This will be added as a tool tip. Let's have a look at the form. Now, before we finalize the form, we want to make the success message only showing when we have the required attributes. So this we can edit as a form action. We go to actions to the left and create a new rule. So let's say the success message should only be shown when the systolic and diastolic blood pressure is available. How to use the syntax is further described in the form builder user manual. We create the rule like this. The indicator widget shall be shown if these are available. Otherwise, it will be hidden. Let's try out the rule. We can see that the success message is now not showing. If we add some sample data, we can see that the rule is working. There can be further edits to the form as an example, excluding some of these fields selections. Let's try to submit. And we can see this works. If we want to save and publish a form, we first have to click save. We can call it a name. We can select the version as 0.1.0 and save. This form will now be available in the CKM, so we can head back to the CKM and go to forms. We can now see that the BP measurement project form is available. We can see a preview of it, and this form can also be published. This will cause the form to be accessible online as an endpoint. This will take a few minutes before it will be accessible, but this is the way to go. That was user store number five. Uh, we'll move on to user store number six. As an administrator, I want to be able to reference uh, uh, to, well, there's some, it's around the metadata it's specified more in the, in the appendix A. And we'll, we'll, we'll actually not show anything specific during this point. We'll show more in the 3173 user story. But in general, Cambio is sort of used to managing holistic and sort of uh, uh, regional health data and large scale EHRs. So we, we're, we're used to covering primary care, secondary care, and social care within the same databases. Uh, same thing with public and privately uh, private provided health care within the same databases. And we always need to be able to tag different types of documents uh, and uh, patient data uh, organizationally and different processes and so on. So we can separate uh, access to data and filter uh, data and query data correctly. So this is something that's sort of, in, it's in Canvas DNA to work with large scale data management and, and using metadata to solve different types of uh, requirements. Thank you, Martin. So uh, our previous persona, she had a lot of use user stories around her and now we're gonna listen to another one this is john he is a platform administrator or technician and um, let's see what we can demo to help him out in his daily work so we'll start with user story one as a server admin i want to use supporting functions so that i can carry out technical troubleshooting 
Uh, well, currently the Carrot platform will, will be provided as a either a pure SaaS uh, or a managed service. That means much of the technical troubleshooting will, will sit with the Cambio technical staff. Uh, how, however, there are uh, areas where we would like to engage in dialogue with our customers and the implementers to see how we can uh, jointly sort of have the, the good tools for monitoring. And in the next uh, user story, 3172, we'll show a little bit around how we work with monitoring uh, operational status of, of the applications. And, and user story two is, as the first line support tech, I want to, to view the system's operational status via web UI so that I can at a glance check if there are any issues. Yeah, so this is Gustav speaking here. Um, so with this slide, we want to present um, an approach to monitoring. Uh, and what you see is some, some generated mock metrics projected to a dashboard for clinical decision support uh, applications. And at the top there, uh, you can see some common server metrics, uh, such as request count, latency, and potential errors. And below there, you can see some aggregated uh, usage metrics per application and grouped by the type of day. Uh, now, this is a this is a generic approach for monitoring, and it can be applied to web servers, application servers, clients, and so on. And you set up logging for the system components you're interested in, and you filter the logs in a log pipeline, uh, and then you feed it to a dashboard. So it's essentially a matter of defining who needs to see what, and, and the technology will adapt to that. Thank you, Gustav. We will move on to user story three. As an administrator, I want to manage access rights, for example, configuring rules, roles, and access control policies so that I can restrict access to information based on user context and information attributes. We will now show how um, Cam Platform can be used to work with uh, access and access control to patient data and specifically the Swedish patient data law. So in, in the PDL support in Cambio platform, the, uh, it consists of a, a framework of uh, making sure that the compositions stored are tagged with the appropriate uh, care unit and care providers according to the, the uh, Swedish implementation guidelines of, for PDL. And then it's also based on, on filtering uh, when doing AQL queries, for example, when checking active choices. So that's something we will show now. So I will start with creating a patient and that's actually a post to the Canva platform patient service. And so it's a Firebase request. So it's just to create a patient for this test case. You have the body here and as a result, it will create a patient and uh, which also then has a the, the patient service also creates a, a, an EHR ID for this patient, which you can see here. So that's creating our test patient. So if we go over to the PDL um, uh, test cases, what we'll do now is we'll create three compositions and each composition will belong to different care unit and care provider. So the first composition, uh, well, two compositions will belong to the same care provider uh, but different care units, whereas the uh, the user who then will be querying for the data belongs to one of them. And then we will also create a, a composition on a third care unit belonging to a second care provider. So we will start with creating a, uh, for the first composition, we just check the body here. And in this uh, first composition, you it will have a, these are just simple compositions with the blood pressure entries. So this one has a blood pressure of 111 over 70. And you can also later see that there's information about the care unit. Let's see, uh, the care unit and the care provider. Care party organization. So we will post this. 
So it got created okay, it's a 201. So that was the composition with the blood pressure on care unit one and care provider one. Second, so we will basically repeat this. And, uh, but this composition has a, a different care unit and care provider in the uh, other context of the composition. But, and the, the blood pressure here is 122 over 99. So we will post this and it creates the decomposition. And this one as well was tagged with uh, different care units and care providers. I will show you that. Here we have in the other context, the first cluster, the care unit organization, and then you'll have a second cluster here with the care provider organization. So the third composition actually belongs to another care provider. So same thing here. So these are, these are all compositions as well that we're posting on the same patient. So I'll send that here. Uh, it's a 201, uh, so it's a successful creation of the composition. And this uh, composition has a blood pressure with Let's see. Here we go. Observation. Hundred and thirty three over seventy nine. So that's three uh, compositions created on the for the same patient, but in different regulatory spaces from a Swedish PDL. Uh, perspective. So we will now actually do a query. So first of all, this is a uh, an ad hoc query uh, for, for blood pressure for this patient. And the what's important here is the the headers. And first of all, the, the PDL active choice is set to none, which means that, uh, and also the, the, the authorization, the, the uh, the user context, the, the user that's doing this request is working from a care unit two um, context. So, and they have not said it's an active choice. They have not actively wanted to, to see more data. So the expected behavior here is to only see the blood pressure from care unit two. Now it's actually 122 over 99. So when we query, we have the query response. Uh, yeah, sorry, it was only the, the diastolic value that we queried for. So it's 99. Then if I actually uh, say that this was an active choice, so the, the user wants to, to see more data outside of their uh, care unit. So they want to see within their full care provider that that um, active choice flag is set in the header. Same query, so we will query for that. And here, the expected uh, result is to see the the initial blood pressure from this composition and this one, but not this one, as it's in another care provider. So here we actually see the uh, diastolic value as well from from the care provider uh, from the first care provider. So we have two entries. So that's a way of how you can use metadata and and control of access to data uh, in a Swedish context. Another piece of Cambio Platform's uh, overall access control of, uh, well, access to data is uh, the audit event service uh, that also comes with the platform. So all uh, read requests, uh, including queries, are logged uh, using the uh, fire fire audit event resource. So just as an example, these queries we executed here now will turn up as uh, audit event resources here. This is just an example, a Grafana view of the uh, log events. So this just enables the uh, 
the user or the customer to follow up on their access to patient data to further comply with different types of regulatory requirements such as PDL. So in addition to this, uh, there will also be querying or filtering of queries based on the consents in the Canva Platform consent service. So the consents based on a shared record keeping or the uh, some, some ticket to some or uh, offering, as well as the uh, uh, inner and outer blocks, the SPADAR. And in the active choice functionality, uh, you can also extend the, the header to to see outside other care providers as well. Uh, and so th these, are, these are all parts of sort of an extensive uh, authorization management of data and data access in Cambio platform that always ensures that the uh, correct data is shown to the user based on the user's access rights. That was user story number three there. We will move on to the next persona. You, you? Yeah, this is Alma, and uh, she's a super user, you would say. She works both as a nurse or a physician, uh, but also as a researcher. So let's hear. So for Alma, uh, user story number one, as a clinician, I want to build and design a dynamic form based on existing templates with conditional form field display logic and automatic, automatic calculations for structured documentation. Here we see the form builder with the BMI template loaded. Let's create a BMI form from it. Let's start by adding the height, the weight, and the body mass index and quantity fields to the form. Next, let's add the required property to both of these two fields, signaling to the user that these fields are mandatory. Next, let's say that we want a two column layout. We can achieve this by hovering over this row here and clicking the add column button. Let's drag the BMI field to the right hand side column and we got a neat uh, two column layout here. Now, let's say that we want the BMI field to be automatically calculated based on the input from the height and the weight fields. We can do this by adding a GDL guideline. So let's open the GDL panel here and create a new one. First, we need to define a trigger condition for this guideline. That trigger condition should be when the height and the weight fields have values. Let's add this to our condition over here. We grab their IDs and write out an expression like this. Second, let's select the BMI guideline as the guideline to run when the trigger condition is met. Let's try this out by moving over to the preview panel uh, and enter some values. We can see that the guideline is triggered dynamically, automatically populating this field here with the results of the BMI calculation. Now, let's say we want to take this one step further and we want to show some information text to our colleagues only if the BMI field's value is above 30. So let's start by adding a text widget. Let's move over to the widget panel and click text here. Let's drag it to the right hand side. Now let's populate this with some content. We go to the translation panel. This form only has one language, so we only have to enter it once. And we scroll all the way down to find our text widget here. Now let's write some explanatory text to our colleagues. Okay, so we can see our text text content shown here, but we only want this to be shown when the value of this field is above 30. Okay, so we can achieve that by going to the action panel here and creating a new action. Similar to the GDL guidelines, we need to define a trigger condition. So that trigger condition should be when this BMI field has a value above 30. 
So let's grab the ID of this field here. Let's say when the BMI is above 30 as our trigger condition. When that trigger condition is met, we want to assign some, uh, some property values here. And we basically want the hidden property of this text field to be true or false based on this. So let's grab the ID here. Let's say text.hidden. Okay. And let's set this to false. Okay. Otherwise, let's set this to true. Now let's move over to the preview tab and see how the form behaves. Let's have some values again. Here we can see that the BMI is below 30. Let's increase it a little bit. And now we can see that the text is rendered. So in summary here, we have created a, a form out of a BMI template. We've added a GDL guideline to automatically calculate the, the BMI value and populate this field. Based on the value of this field, conditionally showing or hiding this text. That was user story number one. We'll move on to the second one. As a researcher, I want to create reusable methods to search, collect, and present data. For example, regarding a certain patient group or diagnosis, and only for a specific gender at a certain age. I will now show you how you can use the Canva platform to create AQL queries. Uh, this is something that is very useful as a non-developer or as a, for example, a researcher that's familiar with the open air data model and wants to create queries uh, that, can that can be used for querying patient data within an open air CDR. So I'll be logging in to the uh, Canva platform CKM. And this is where you'll find things like archetypes and templates and, and different types of, of artifacts like forms and also the the uh, queries and the, <coughs> and the AQL query uh, tool. But to start off with, I'll select a template. I'll use a BMI template as an example here, uh, and a BMI open air template. And from that, I can create an AQL query. This takes you into the AQL builder that uh, has the uh, template on the left side and a sort of an editor uh, view on the right. So if we want, we can add different parts of the uh, template into the query here. So height, weight, and body mass as an example. If we want, we can also expand to use other parts of the open air reference model. If we want to use to filter a query on time and locations or composers and things like that. Uh, so this query then is basically a single patient query for height, weight, latest height and weight uh, sorted by uh, to sort of by descending. So it's the latest uh, values. We can test run the the query from here if we want. We can copy it and erase it and so on. Uh, and here you see the the result. Once we're done, uh, we can save the query. So this would be. Latest be my simple single patient. And the version, uh, let's see, the version is 1.0.0. Uh, used to query for latest height, weight, and be my for a single patient. Submit. So this is then stored. And it will then be stored within the, the CKM, uh, so the central repository. So now if I go to the queries page here, I have this, uh, this AQL query for BMI. I can click on it. I can add tags to it if I want. So this is a demo query. So then it will be shown out here as a, a, a demo. Uh, query, which can be useful. Uh, we can also publish it if we want to say this is now a a published uh, 
uh, query. And of course, we can always go in and edit the query if we want, and then update it. As well as we can access the documentation for the AQL uh, builder here. So you have a user manual showing how it, how it works. So this is something that is very useful for researchers when creating queries and potentially also for, for super users uh, and informaticians to query data and create uh, AQL queries. Det hörs inte du, Martin. There we go. Uh, sorry, I put myself on mute. So, uh, use store number three. So, as a clinician, I want to design and generate ad hoc reports from data collected through a form. So, and this is not something that Cambio uh, currently provides on top of our open air based uh, platform, uh, but we have this type of uh, product in our overall portfolio. And it is in our general strategy to integrate that towards the CDR or the open air API in general. Uh, and we see that it has huge value, uh, a, a big value for, for our customers that we see is, is reducing the time it takes to generate reports for clinicians and the business. So we, we already provide those type of tools within the EHR space. And we want to do that also going forward in the uh, sort of open air space. And these are just example screenshots of the, the uh, Cambio Cosmic Insight product where you can uh, create uh, reports and dashboards uh, on aggregated data. We'll move on to uh, use store number four, as a new employee or occasional burst user, I need user-friendly and intuitive, easy to use tools and graphical user interfaces. To build tools with a good user experience and a coherent design, we have a design system at Cambio called Atmosphere. The design system is the collected place for both designers and developers, where you can find guidelines, examples, and code, and how to use our components. So, for example, we can look at the buttons here. You can see examples of them with the hover effect. You can read the guidelines and you can read about the accessibility and what to think of. And you can also see them as examples with code. There are many benefits of using a design system, but mainly it's a consistency for the end users. But it's also reusable components with tightly attached guidelines to help both developers and designers to create user-friendly and intuitive tools. Right now, it's only in use for internal applications, but offers design tokens to products outside of our offering to be able to use the same fonts and colors and for a more similar look and feel. But the plan is to make the design system open to third-party products, which also means that the plan is to include it in our Cambio platform offering. So we will move on to the next uh, persona. Yes. And uh, for you who haven't seen that, we have decided that we will answer all your questions in the end instead uh, in the chat. So be patient with us. Um, Ibrahim is an application end user. Uh, so uh, he is actually in that case, both a healthcare clinician and a citizen. And I think that uh, in the beginning when there was a said all the kind of represents we have in this meeting you are all of i think at least patients and, and next kins as well so yeah you're citizens as well so even that you have covered <laughs> in this meeting yeah so go ahead bring it on so there's only one user story here uh oh sorry uh, as a clinician i want to have a clinical decision support uh i want to have a cl clinical decision support and process support functionality to improve the quality of care and reduce risks. This is the prostate cancer assessment form rendered inside the preview tab of the forum builder, mimicking the behavior of the forum in its runtime environment. First, the form is in Swedish, so let's change the language to English. Let's imagine we're a urologist filling out the form for our patient. We have a PSA of five, 
P PSA density of 0 0.2, 12 biopsies taken, two pathological, 25 millimeter tumor length, and 45 milliliter prostate volume. Let's move on to the staging of the tumor. The primary tumor is T2B, no regional lymph node involvement, no distant metastases, no light urinary tract uh, symptoms. Now, let's move over to the grading of the tuber. The dominant pattern is grade three, and the secondary pattern is grade four. And the answer to this question is no. And the patient has no significant comorbidities. We can see that something is going on here on the right panel. Uh, a GDL uh, guideline has ran and calculated an intermediate risk for our patient. We can override this if we want to, but let's stick with the calculated value. Let's write out a short assessment for our patient. Let's add the stage and grade. Okay, and let's move over, over to the planning part. Let's review the recommendation we got here. Uh, radiotherapy or prostatectomy uh, is recommended. Um, active monitoring is also an option. We need to discuss this with our colleagues at a multidisciplinary conference. So let's write that. And then we're done. Let's sign. Here we've opened the GDL2 editor. It's preloaded with the prostate cancer risk assessments guideline and related archetypes. We're greeted with a description tab uh, with uh, inputs for metadata and author information. Let's move over to the definition tab. Here we can see the input and output bindings of the guideline. The input bindings are based on the prostate cancer assessment archetype, such as PSA, number of biopsies, and Gleason score. The output uh, bindings are based on the prostate cancer risk group archetype and the prostate cancer assessment archetype, with nodes such as risk group and total Gleason score. Let's move over to the ghoul list. Here we can see all our rules for this guideline that are executed in sequence, defining the result of the guideline. If we open the very low risk group, for example, we can see the rule conditions here. And when all of these evaluate to true, if the primary tumor is T1C, and the PSA is below 10 and so on, is going to assign the risk group output binding to very low, okay? If we have a look at the intermediate risk group, uh, we can see that if the total Gleason score is seven, then it's going to assign the risk group to intermediate risk. Now let's move over to the execution tab and try out our guideline. Let's enter some data. Let's run it by clicking Execute. Here we can inspect the guideline execution result. The risk group was assigned to intermediate risk and the total Gleason score to seven. Also, we have a test fixture generated for us with the inputs here generated from the form input over here. The expected output is the execution results we have here, such as intermediate risk. Let's generate a test fixture based on this. Let's call it intermediate risk. Let's add it to our test suite. And let's move over to the test tab. So here we can see our, uh, our list of test fixtures. Now we only have one test here. Now let's execute it. We can see that one test has passed and we have zero test failures. 
our rule co coverage is, is very low since we only have one test and all of these rules are uncovered uh, by our tests. If we want to break this, we can change the value here of the, of the expected Gleason score to six and execute. And we can see that we now have a test failure because the expected was six, but the actual Gleason score was seven. Let's change this back. Now this was a short, short tour of the GDL2 editor. We will move on to the next persona. Yes, and this is an external actor. Uh, she could be a student or someone who wants to build an app from a company or in another healthcare region uh, or a researcher that wants to make a more tailored fit solution. <clears throat> so here, it can be as, as uh, so far in this demonstration showed uh, some of our open air capabilities and fire API capabilities along with our tooling. Uh, we also have a large set of additional APIs uh, in the EHR space, in the Cosmic EHR space. And it is Cambio's strategy to, to start consolidating both the, the, uh, our new platform offering and the EHR offering. And so we won't go into this in detail, but Cambio has uh, a, a, an online portal for, it's called uh, Cambio Innovation. You can go on there and see our external APIs. And it, we can also then uh, find lots of our existing Fire APIs that run on uh, our Cosmic EHR. You can see the, it's quite small, the text, but there's a long list of Fire APIs that we currently support in, in the Cosmic EHR space. And this is also, again, something where our strategy is to consolidate this towards also the our new platform offering. So we'll move on to the next persona. This is the last one on our road trip here through the user personas, Lynn. Uh, she's a newbie. She doesn't know that much. And uh, how can we support her? As a new user to the CKM and the related tools, such as the form builder and the AQL builder, it will be necessary to have easy access to some training material before getting more familiar with the tools. The training material is always available, no matter where in the CKM and the related tools the user is. From the CKM header, the training material site will be easily accessible via external links. A starting guide is available here. It's easy to navigate through the table of contents or even download the, the guide as a PDF. Even if the user is working inside the form builder, there will be easy access to user documentation. Let's try documentation access from inside the form builder. So we can go to an existing form. and edit that. Let's say a new user is about to change a form action and forgot the syntax rules for form actions. The user documentation will be just a few clicks away. The user documentation will be available in the header where more information about actions can be found. Great, and that was actually our last uh, part of the demonstration, and we now move over to the Q&A session, and uh, I will hand over to Johanna to moderate that. Yes, I think you can stop sharing your screen, Martin. So uh, we think like this, we have seen all your questions in the chat, and um, to make it easier and also because uh, some of them is actually Martin going to answer to and he has not had the possibility to read them yet. <laughs> so we'll give him some time. 
to see them. So first I will take a question I saw that I can take uh, spontaneously. Then Gustav will um, talk about a couple of them too. And then Martin will answer uh, three, I think. And then uh, we will ask for the recording to stop. Uh, so it might be new follow-up questions, of course, but we would like that. And then we uh, have a session unrecorded after that. Is that okay? Perfectly okay. <laughs> Great. Um, so the first one that I could answer was regarding insight that you just saw a couple of screenshots of. And um, just to clarify, today the insight solution that we provide from Cambio is uh, working towards an, um, uh, our cosmic intelligence part. So it's, it's mainly the EHR uh, data that they can uh, work on. But as Martin said, in the roadmap, we are planning to direct that to different uh, databases, uh, for example, uh, CDR. Um, the functionality is uh, very, very broad. And the question here was, uh, Will insight be able to be used for following up and analyzing an organization's data? For instance, will a medical center be able to follow their listed patients and patient groups, build indicators and follow them over time? So the one who wrote that question, would you like to elaborate the question a little bit more so we yes. understand what you're asking about? Yes, uh, we have a lot of projects such as primary care quality, primary care quality. Yeah. And uh, there we're building indicators. And I'm thinking now we have to do it. We are bringing all the information in a specific um, data warehouse. And then we are choosing the patient groups that we want to build the indicators upon. And then we are following these indicators over time. For instance, a patient that has had a specific uh, diagnosis and then they took medication and then they stopped with medication and then they came for a visit. Mm. And this is an indicator. And I take all these indicators and present them for the medical center. And then I show for the medical center so many patients you had under February 2022 and so on. Mm. And over time, Will we be able to do that in insight? Because now we can't do that in insight. We can take a population, we can take patient lists, men, but not uh, build indicators. Okay, so um, is it just to clarify? Is it cosmic insight? You mean because there yes. are many products yes, yes. that is <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's cosmic insight. Yeah. So uh, I think that that is uh, a very interesting use case. And technically, uh, I think that it's possible to do that ki kind of queries. Um, but I think that in a combination also with clinical decision support. Uh, so there is a strong technical and functional baseline for this. Then it's also about this with the primary usage and secondary usage that sometimes uh, challenge these kind of applications. So this is definitely something we could discuss further to see uh, if you say that you already tried out Cosmic Insight for this purpose and it has not worked, um, then I must refer to our team that knows the functionality better um, because there might be some extra features that must be added to do exactly what you are aiming for. But that is a really good case that you are referring to. Uh, so uh, let's follow up yeah. and discuss that further, because uh, I think that could also be very re relevant for where you are not right now, with or without a CDR <laughs> uh, based on open air, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yes. OK, um, was that an answer to your question? Yes. OK, good, good. And I just um, take a mental note to follow up that with you. Good. Then Gustav, there is a couple of questions here that I think you could elaborate around. And uh, the first one was uh, when we, I think it was when we saw the form editor. So the question was like this, you choose not to demo any IoT devices, but refer to the need for policies or guidelines around the IoT devices from the Swedish archetype community. Does that mean that data only can be entered manually? 
no fetching of data from other systems or devices and combining them with, for example, manually entered or existing data is possible. So uh, I think it was uh, Jenny Harris' daughter who wrote this. Could you just explain and, uh, the question a little bit more? And I, I, so I, I just spoke to you earlier, as it was, I, I presented that point. So I thought we, I can respond. Uh, yes, but here. So, let's, let's hear from Jenny first then. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm, I, I don't know. Um... And maybe Martin needs to answer if there is any unclearities to the question. Uh, or, or, I mean, the, the question is asked, what do you yeah, want me to elaborate? I can answer the, the question as, as I interpret it, and again, you can ask <laughs> me again if there's anything you need, need to clarify. So first of all, uh, so the, the Canva platform comes uh, with, you, you can enter data and, uh, or you can input data in two different ways, either through the APIs, so your, your system and you want to build something, uh, you in the IT department want to build something, or there's a other vendor that has developed an application, they can access the APIs to input data, for example, from IoT, and that's the, the, the open air uh, API, so you can write to the CDR, or it's any of the, the fire APIs that we provide. So that, that's, that's not a sort of a user uh, interface. That's a system way of interacting with the, the platform. Then you have the forms, which is what a, a, a patient or a clinician will, will uh, use to enter data. And that will also then in turn use the uh, open air API. So two ways in, and there's nothing preventing uh, uh, another vendor or an IoT device to plug into the platform. And when it comes to the, the, the reference uh, we made to the open air community and so on, when, when we looked at this, uh, sort of how do we solve this in open air, we, we actually had an internal discussion amongst the informat inf informaticians at Cambio. And we saw that, well, this, it's actually, you could solve this in different ways. So, uh, or at least it's not, it's not clear uh, exactly how you would do this using the open air. It's possible, but you know, we, there needs to be agreement. And if there's, if you do, if different devices input data in different ways, you will not get expectable results when you do AQL queries and so on. So that's why we want to have a, 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 a implementation guide and a pattern for how you work with this uh, agreed on in the open air community. So it's consistent. Uh, did I answer the question or, or was there some part that I missed? No, it's okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Good. Um, then we take uh, uh, the question regarding, is it possible to add an own design system to use in your products? Uh, and I think, uh, Osa, you wrote that. So what do you mean by products? And, and uh, perhaps you could elaborate uh, regarding your idea there. Yeah. Uh... You said that you have a design system uh, and to use within your product soon, if I remember right. I just thought that if we have a design system, could we use that instead? Or if we want to apply different design systems in different contexts to create a, a different look and feel in, in different places in our organizations? Yeah, and you mean by... It, when you're using the form builder, for example. Yeah, the user, the UI. make the user interfaces look. Ah, okay, yeah. Because we, we uh, perhaps it's Gustav who could answer if you can. Today, do you have that already that you can switch uh, design system? Because as uh, Esther said in that demo, the design system we call atmosphere that we are using at Cambio today, we have not been using for for external forms editor yet but perhaps Gustav you could answer yeah because yeah. somehow we need to, to use a design system so I just wonder how which one and how yeah yeah I can uh, I can clarify that a little bit so regarding the form builder and the forms we, we have two ways basically uh, we we expose design tokens uh, so you can override colors and sizes and that kind of thing uh, and second, you can also uh, you can import your own uh, widgets into the forms. So those are the two ways you can sort of uh, put your own look and feel to the forms. So um, not just switching design system as easily in the, in that 
part but i mean we haven't focused that much on on the uh yet <laughs> so uh i think that was the questions that i posted to you gustav now i will go and have uh, three of them to you, Martin, and uh, there have come up one more. We will uh, also try to see here in the chat who should answer. But the first one, Martin, that I would like you to elaborate around was regarding the terminology service. Is it possible to connect other terminology service services uh, servers uh, to the platform? Yes. Yeah, so, the, so. Uh... Within the platform, we provide a terminology service uh, based on a, a standardized Fire API. And we're actually using, for those who are interested in that, uh, it's mainly uh, driven by a third party product, Snow Owl. So it's quite a powerful terminology server, but it's a Fire API. So it's, it can be replaced and you can, you can use another terminology service if you want. You don't have to use the one that, that we provide. Okay, who answered that? Who, who asked that question? Was it an answer good enough? I don't remember. I, I can, a general comment here is that we, the idea, we want to be able to be very modular. I mean, we showed a bit that you could, for example, use the forms tool to point it to different CDRs. Uh, even though in practice, it's not always as easy to just plug and play different components, but our general strategy is to be very modular and have standardized interfaces in all places so that we can replace uh, components. And sometimes our customers will have already bought uh, products and services from other vendors, and they want to complement their, their platform or their ecosystem with, with the new, just a, a subset of what we provide. So we at least try to accommodate those type of requirements as well. So it was Maria Bergen who asked that question. Was it answered good enough? Uh, yes, thank you. Good, good. thank you. So uh, Martin, uh, the next question that I would like you to answer was, uh, if we already have a fire server of our own, can your solution use that as a source for metadata using access control rules? provided that we use appropriate Swedish fire profiles? Uh, this is a, not a super simple question. Depends on use it for what, but the, sh the short answer is yes. And the, with the uh, addition of, pro it, it depends, but overall, yes. It's sort of similar to yeah. the previous so question. Perhaps we could ask the one who asked the question if you want to elaborate a little bit more before you answer, so we can tailor your answer better. We, we can't hear you, Eric. You're on mute. No. <laughs> I saw the body language that it doesn't work too. Okay. But then you, was it okay the answer my, Martin so, gave you then? <laughs> I, I, this is a big topic. And I'm happy to pick it up with the Eric also <laughs> outside this call. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, then we take another one that I, uh, is about care unit hierarchies. I think that was when you showed uh, the work with uh, active choice and so on, uh, internal uh, boundaries. How do you handle care unit hierarchies with regard to the Swedish patient data law? For example, if the patient encounter occurs at the child care unit under the same parent care unit. So this is about unit hierarchies. Uh, okay, let's see if I, I can, I'm reading the question here as well at the same time. So hold on a second. Uh, for example, if the patient encounter occurs at a child care unit under the same parent uh, care unit. So, I mean, the, in general, uh, the, uh, um, we we hand we use the the normal HSA uh, hierarchies for for care provider and care unit in our evaluation. So uh, you will access data based on an active choice uh, outside of your care unit, uh, but within the care provider. If you if you uh, there are no 
inner blocks. Uh, and then we will sort of, uh, it, it's, it's the normal PDL evaluation, similar to what you would have in Cosmic as an example. So we, we differentiate between uh, your care unit and then going outside to looking at all care units under the same care providers or within the region, for example. So it depends on here the where these child, if you have one, uh, you probably have a, the, the child care unit is probably a care unit, and then you might have different clinics and departments underneath that. Oh, I, uh, let me elaborate just yeah. quickly. Uh, yeah, in, thank you. Uh, in, in one, I'll, I'll give you an actual example. In, in one of our hospital groups, we have the radiology department, which is the designated care unit from a PDL perspective, right? So we have have radiology and that's a care unit uh, and then there might be several radiology labs spread out on different in different locations and they actually have different age hsa ids uh, right and they are the patients are to uh, you know uh, diagnosed there they, they are uh, met there and whatever uh, composition is added to the hr it's done by that care unit but they are part of that over that parent care unit, which we, which is the care unit on the PDA level. And I know sometimes uh, it's uh, the rules do not traverse up until it finds the proper care. It, it assumes that whatever whatever care unit was was tagged in the composition is actually the care unit from a PDL perspective, rather than okay. that being a clinic care. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So we yeah. we. Uh... We distinguish clearly, and this is also based on the open air implementation guide. So there's the healthcare facility, which is the actual specific uh, sort of unit where the patient uh, data is, is sort of created and generated at or documented. It belongs to that unit. And that is then separated from the HSA care unit and care providers. So we, we always make sure to get the correct metadata on the compositions. So if, if you have, um, uh, so the 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 care unit, the HSA care unit, is not necessarily the same thing as where the patient has been has been uh, treated, as often sort of a, on a higher level. Um, All right. Sure so, that... Yeah. So, yeah. so 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 in a sense, you could have you could have one one sort of organizational unit or care unit, which is the sort of uh, composition custodian, if you want, and then mm -hmm. there is a, from a PDL perspective. Switch patient or data law, there is a care unit, and then there is a care provider, of course. Yes. For that. So exactly. you've got those three. Uh, information points. Yes. 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 On each composition. Hmm. All right. Thank you. Correct. If 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 I, I might uh, extend the question because the the one with the BVC the one <laughs> that question was really it was really good actually I hadn't thought of that uh, we are defining a, a, um, a healthcare on the uh, child healthcare BVC besök uh, mm -hmm. through contact type and MVC besök through role barn morska. Mm -hmm. So it's not a different unit ID. It's not a different unit identifier. How are we going to do that? I mean, there is no organizational hierarchy for identifying uh, which department in the World Central um, people have been to. Is it going to be solved the same way or? Uh, depends on if it's regarding PDL you're talking about now. Yeah. Yeah because uh, there, there is no need to execute on that low level in the hierarchy, so to speak, for the first, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, 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 Martin, perhaps you could elaborate, but uh, um, it, that kind of, yes. of, if you have a kind of visit mm -hmm. that is still on the unit and you can have different visits and, and from a PDL perspective, they are all on the same level, so to speak, uh, regarding sensitivity. Yeah, so I, I think this is a, a big topic, uh, but in, in, in general, so I think it goes back to the, the previous uh, answer. So each composition that we store, so each document or note or encounter, it will be tagged with, a, uh, with the healthcare facility, which is where the actual care took place. It has nothing to do with the sort of HSA PDL hierarchies. Uh, and then uh, in addition to that, it's uh, according to, the, to, to the, the guidelines, it's tagged with the what is marked in the HSA catalog as the care unit, the uh, 
vårdenhet and also its care provider, the vårdgivare. So as long as you have these structures and these, uh, these are saved on the compositions, it evaluates according to the, uh, no, the regulatory rules, according to active choices, uh, blocks, sparrar, uh, and uh, consent. So some ticket is some on offering. Then it can sometimes be, you know, your organizational structures, the at the regions sometimes are a bit different and the, there needs to be, you know, a little bit of further dialogue and how things work in practice. But that, that's the general uh, setup. We're happy to have this type of dialogue, uh, you know, more in detail at some other time. Yes, yes. Cases. We should, we should. I think we need to go to next questions. Um, so, um, this is about uh, information that must be archived. Martin, I'm not sure if you are the one, but I, I yeah, asked it to I can, you. But before you that. answer, okay. we could ask the person who asked the question to elaborate a little bit, a bit more. It says here, most information in the patient record must be archived at some point. Is it possible to export the information, for example, the XML? What role does FIRE play in this, if any? So the one who asked that question could... Uh, elaborate a little bit what you're asking for. Or I, I can I think it was Anne Halvig. Yes. yes, yes it was. Um, uh, well if you can answer uh, Mart Martin, please. Uh, I can start answering and we can do the same thing as with Jenny here. Yeah. If, if you're not happy with the answer you, you can ask me to clarify. So in general the uh, the platform as a whole and the CDR specifically, it's very important that it's easy to get data into the platform and the CDR and out. Uh, and so an archiving is a specific use case uh, for that. And there can be, uh, you have uh, organizational departments that close and you know there are these type of things we want to archive data. So one is just a generic functionality to get data out from the CDR. Uh, that's sort of a, uh, a simpler use case, uh, which uh, actually I think we're currently working on that, but it will be available when we uh, release the CDR to the market and, and general export. Archiving is something that we are looking uh, at. We, we started looking at that. We know it's a big requirement, uh, for example, from our uh, EHR uh, space. So how you archive data, patient data, uh, so it's something that we want to incorporate into the platform early on because um, we know those type of requirements will come later uh, once the, the platform starts to be used at, at scale. So we have a lot of experience from the EHR space for how, how to, well, the, re the requirements around archiving, uh, what to do and what not to do. And we want to take that into the, to our new platform offering. So you can actually properly not only export, but also archive data. Uh, do you uh, we like to export uh, the information to our uh, archive for electronic uh, documents yeah so so it's not you're you're not speaking about uh, an archive in your own. Uh, no we, we would probably not be be the archive. If you if you have your own archive, we would just expose or, or push the data to that archive, and then uh, we need to decide on how should we then uh, should we physically remove that data from the CDR in this case, or should it be flagged as archived in some way? That's not been decided yet. But uh, so that that's something we're looking at as part of our roadmap. But we know we need to support that type of. Uh, archiving is an important use case in a health data platform. And I think that there's also uh, an additional sort of add-on regarding uh, FIRE uh, to this question. And I think the it, that depends the base that depends on the output uh, format for the data that when we publish it out from the platform, we will likely have or will have a, a sort of a, an open air extract. Uh, whether we also need to have sort of a, a to expose fire data for the archiving use case, uh, it's not something we have considered now. But if that's a you know, uh, if the consuming archive wants 
quantify your data, not something we could we could support. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have uh, the possibility now to switch off the recording, and we would like you to do that, Wasa. Uh, 